Kent Seacat. I'm married to Gina. We have been married for 36 years. We have a son, Michael, in Seattle, and a daughter, Kylie, in Denver with her husband, David. And we've been coming to renovation ever since we came back from uh, living in Denver about five years ago. We knew that uh, Kurt and Josiah were starting this, and God led us right here. So right now, God has me in a role that I get to work with a, a number of wonderful people throughout the country. So I have a territory that is in multiple states. I work in the investment area within a bank. It's interesting, I never had a clear direction as to this is what I want to do when I grow up. I can still remember sitting uh, in graduation at ASU and looking around thinking, all of these people probably have it figured out. They know what they want to do. They know the direction they're going, and I didn't. I did not know what I wanted to do. I went into my current career because I needed a job. I had a background in finance from an educational standpoint, and God got me started. I used to think that, you know, when you get to a certain age, you're gonna have it all figured out. And for me, for whatever reason, it was 50. I thought, you know, when I get to 50, that's gotta be, the time when you've got your career in order, your family in order, as a Christian, you've got it all figured out. And I turned 50 about eight years ago, and I learned that there wasn't a date that you arrive. And I learned that the goal is actually the process. What I'm going through right now is the most important thing. And I'm not going to arrive at some point where I've got it all figured out and everything's perfect this side of heaven. So it's, a, it's an ongoing challenge for me. I think the first time that I saw the impact of somebody truly being an influence was when I was in my 20s and I had a, just a great boss. And uh, he was a guy that I had a great relationship with and he spoke into my life and I knew at all times that he was, he was for me, that he believed in me. So when I'd mess up or when I would struggle, he was quick to uh, encourage me and point out a different direction that maybe I should have taken in a given uh, circumstance, but I received it well. And the reason I received it well is because we had a great relationship. We later became great friends after he was no longer my boss. And it makes all the difference in the world when you know somebody is for you. And he was for me. So that was a good life lesson for me that if I want to be an influence, I've got to cultivate relationships and um, develop some trust and respect with the people in my life works a lot more fun as well when, you, when you've got friendships and you've got relationships, but hopefully I've been able to develop some relationships where there's trust and mutual respect so that um, I can influence and I can be influenced. I think it's also important to be surrounded by uh, people that, will, that we can support each other, that we're in this together, and to be married to Gina and to have um, Gina at my side, is, it makes all the difference. Do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> Rus Ruskar has his family from Turkey, so he's got a lot of cool things that you eat, right? Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Whoa, dude. But I'm born too. From an influence standpoint, Gene and I are very excited. We're going to be grandparents. You know, we all go through different seasons of where God has us. And right now, Gene and I find ourselves in, as empty nesters in an environment with uh, a lot of people in our lives. And I know. From an influence standpoint, sometimes you find yourself in a very narrow, small um, environment where maybe you're just speaking into the life of a, a kid or a grandkid, and I, I can't think of a more important role than that type of an influence. Gene and I were listening to a podcast by Erwin McManus a couple weeks ago, and he's talking about the divide that we have. And he said, you can't get to a higher level if you always find yourself in a room with people who are exactly like you. And if I take a look at my family and my friends and my neighborhood and my work, it's a real cross section. I've got all ages and backgrounds and a lot of different faiths, a lot of different lifestyles. And I look at that and I think uh, Jesus really modeled that for us because he hung out with his disciples and that was a time to be with people who were like-minded and to be refreshed and encouraged and then as he told us to love your neighbor he went and did that he went out and engaged everybody and so if i think about who did jesus hang out with he hung out with the people that followed him and he hung out with the people who didn't follow him 
So I think that's a great example that uh, as I find myself now in a, in a diverse environment, uh, it's a, I've been given good instruction that uh, we're there to love our neighbor. One of the things I've had to accept is that where I find myself is where God wants me to be. That he's wired all of us in a certain way and that he's, he's placed me and he's led me. And so being salt and light would be the role that I have in the place that he has placed me.